Welcome to No Apologies with Becker on Beck. I realize I'm Lori Hins and not Becker, but he is going to be here with us. He is here with us in spirit, and he is zooming in from a faraway place mm -hmm. again. It looks, it looks a little different, but it is so working to just be able to, to talk with you again this evening, remote style. It, it, you know, technology is so great. Uh, tonight, we are, we are going to talk about a couple of different things, but uh, first, of course, we're going to go back to things affected by COVID because there are so many and um, it has it has been an interesting year to say, say the least. And now we're looking at a couple of ancillary things and corollary things and I uh, will say some collateral damage to the COVID pandemic. And tonight we're talking in particular about COVID's effect on education, Rick. Yes. Yeah, there's uh, different facets that we can look at. It certainly is affecting it. Um, both on a K-12 level and on higher ed. And one of the, one of the first things that, that comes to my mind is to what degree did it really need to affect education? Uh, we're, we're, we're finding that the kids don't really get sick from COVID and there are newer studies that are showing that transmission from children is very unlikely. So the, the, degree to which these, these uh, schools were being shuttered and kids sent home. And then you had this weird hybrid model that made no sense at all if you had any logic. Um, and, then, and then a kid comes and he had a close contact. So then the whole class is, you know, it, it begs the question, did it really even need to happen? However, it did happen. And so now we have to look at the ramifications, consequences of the policies that kept kids out of school. Now I have some anecdotal stuff to share with you, and this is not necessarily scientific, but I have other mommy friends who have kids who are college age, and I have kids who are college age. And what has happened in our case is that it has been a matter of the schooling in colleges has been so changed that kids in uh, my son, one particular son's college uh, just decided to just go home because the education wasn't even remotely what they were expecting. They were doing things like um, homework online, they were doing no in-person classes for this particular college, and he felt like he wasn't even getting any type of instruction whatsoever because there were no longer even any lectures. And because of that, he just kind of said, that's it, I just, I need to take a break until we can do some in-person learning because I'm not even getting educated for what I'm paying for, um, for this right now. And it's a horrible thing, but I also talked to another, and again, this is anecdotal, but I talked to another mother. Her two kids did the same thing, decided, you know what, I'm just not going to bother with it until I can do the in-person learning and I'm getting the quality education for which I'm paying, and so I'm just gonna do a gap year or a gap semester and wait until this is all over and I can resume my studies at that time. Yeah, I think what's happening, there, there's a natural, progression of events, there's going to be a natural um, history, if you will, to how we um, evolve with, with regard to higher education. And there is going to be, and we've talked about it for years, how we are going to move away from the traditional uh, nostalgic idea of campus and all the kids swarming around. And it's going to be much more with regard to online and remote and very limited face-to-face uh, -face, uh, access. And so I think what happened with COVID is it really just hastened what would have been the natural progression. And I think people are going to see how easy it is to do a lot of the classes remotely. Now, you have to be set up for it. You have to be prepared for it, uh, both, both physically with, with the uh, um, hardware and so forth, but just mentally that you need to be um, uh, sort of a self-starter, if you will, or have a, have a timeline and, and a schedule and all of that that you need to keep that maybe didn't need to be that way when you had all of your courses at nine and 10 and 11 o'clock in the morning. Right. So I, it might be, it might be in the end, nothing more for the college um, experience, nothing more than what would have occurred over the next 10 years anyway. Right. Now for elementary schools and for high schools, um, I, there has been some actual recent um, 
news coming out saying, okay, we expected this to happen. We knew that probably there were going to be some issues with um, grades slipping. We knew that it was going to be a, a bit of a problem. And that was interesting to me. I believe that Superintendent Kirsten Baszler came out and said, well, we expected this. Let's see if I can find a quote for her. She says, uh, we did see a dip. We saw learning loss. We saw a decline. We expected that. I know we expected that, um, Kirsten Baszler said. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, again, I don't know what, when you're weighing the pros and cons, when kids are losing a, uh, such a significant aspect of what would have been the normal trajectory of their learning curve because of COVID, because of the <laughs> not knowing, am I in school next week? Am I not? Am I in this weird hybrid thing? Uh, that's a huge, huge loss. And was it worth it? I, you know, I don't think so because everything is showing that the kids didn't need to be kept out of school. But where we're at is that there is a real problem. And I think the biggest thing, maybe we're not seeing a lot of it in North Dakota, but the biggest thing is the disparity of how this is affecting kids of different socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, poorer children, minorities are being disproportionately affected. They, are, they, they have perhaps less resources. And so being out of school, is is showing that they're they're dropping down their their learning curve is is tremendously different than if they had stayed in school whereas the kids that are uh, better off uh more socioeconomically advantaged their curve is continuing to trend upward as though they hadn't left school in some areas even better than when they were in school so what we have is is this this disparate uh effect and the problem is that can carry forward like forever as far as their earning potential, as far as what their, their um, possibilities and potentials are for careers. So it's, uh, I think it's a really unfortunate, unfortunate thing. The, well, I, have, is, uh, I know one teacher in particular in her area, uh, it's in another state, uh, but they are looking at a, a reset. So they're allowing their, their um, elementary kids to just redo the whole year because of how bad off things are. Now, this is wow. a, a, a school where there's uh, more disadvantaged students, but it's significant. It is, and Basler said recently that there has been a decline in grades since just last fall in math and reading and writing, and that's the things. Those are, the, those are all the biggies right there, too. So any type of decline, even that rapidly, is really concerning, particularly, I got to think, to parents. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll say again, this goes to back to me, back to my point of this wasn't even necessary. Um, and these kids are adversely affected. Their mental health is adversely affected. They're falling in their, their intellectual advancement. And it was basically for nothing because, again, what, what happened is that bureaucrats and politicians just had knee-jerk reactions based on fear, not on logic, and who suffers? Certainly not the politicians. Unfortunately, in this case, the, the students, the children do. So if you were in charge, what would you have done for schools? Well, uh, I, I said back in March, Lori, I had Facebook posts out and I said I would not shut the schools down. The kids would stay there. And what we would do instead is for those kids whose parents or primary caregivers were at risk, um, immunocompromised, uh, elderly, whatever it might be, if their caregivers were, were at high risk, then we would make special accommodations, again, if I was in charge, um, to make sure the kids were able to learn without bringing that possibility home with COVID. But for everyone else, um, they would still go to school. Another caveat would have been that any parent who had concerns about sending their kids in, we would make special accommodations to get rid of restrictions, which we should anyway, restrictions for different types of homeschooling to be able to do pods or co-ops. So you can get some neighbors together to say, hey, you take Monday, I'll take Tuesday, you take Wednesday. We're gonna get our kids educated one way or another. Get rid of those restrictions. All of this would have been fine. No kids would have fallen behind and no transmission, increasing transmission of COVID would have occurred from the kids based on what I said in March.
I love that. I love that. I love the whole idea of pods and, and utilizing homeschooling because I think that that's a super valuable tool that's kind of being missed, I think, sometimes with education, particularly in North Dakota. So I, that's, I totally concur with that. Uh, this, is, this is not settled yet. Obviously, we're going to just have to watch and see and see how bad it gets. And that's a really bad place to be. I'm wondering how bad it's going to get. That's not a great place to be. But uh, we're. we're Going to be coming back, and once we come back, I'm very excited to introduce a guest to the set, and I get to sit at the desk, and then she gets to sit in my regular chair, and we'll be talking to a lady of another view, one of them, when we come back. Capital City Restaurant Supply is your one-stop shop for quality restaurant products for the large to small kitchens. Commercial grade restaurant and bar supplies, limb game processing equipment, refrigeration, dinnerware, and smallware. We sell everything including the kitchen sink for trusted manufacturers for the chef and all of us. Open to the public since 1971, we are veteran owned and North Dakota proud. Let us take care of your restaurant and home kitchen needs today by visiting us at 1414 Interstate Loop in Bismarck or on the web at CapitalCityRestaurantSupply.com. Hi, I'm Dennis Haugen, along with my sons Andy and Mike, and we're showing our support for wind energy in North Dakota. Wind energy has provided farmers like us with a steady stream of income that's not tied to the weather, like crops and cattle are. Another bonus is that wind farm owners are required to maintain the roads leading up to the turbines. Because of that, oftentimes these roads are the best in the county. Wind energy is good for landowners, it's good for the land, it's good for our economy, and it's good for North Dakota. For the greatest selection and full menu offering, it's the Four Season Restaurant and Ice Cream Parlor in Garrison. Succulent sandwiches, big breakfast served all day, and delicious desserts. Easy access in and out for campers and RVs. The Four Season Restaurant at the top of Main Street, Garrison. Are you a thrill seeker, sightseer, or day tripper? The Ford Bronco Sport SUV is built for you. Ford Bears Casino is giving away a 2021 Ford Bronco Sport loaded with a ton of interior space, safari style roof, smooth suspension for any terrain, and easy to clean surfaces. Qualify now just by playing your favorite slots at Ford Bears Casino. Double points on Sundays. Also get in on Super Senior Wednesdays, slot turning Thursdays, and hot seats on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Spin into Ford Bears Casino and Lodge for chances to win. things in life are hard. That's why banking shouldn't be. Cornerstone Bank. Welcome back to No Apologies with Becker on Beck with Lori Hins instead of Becker in the studio. He is off on assignment, but I'm very excited to welcome to our studio here at Beck a lady of another view, an L-O-A-V, and that's what they call y'all, the ladies of another view. This is such a fantastic concept, first of all. It's very exciting to have this here in Bismarck, actual regular <laughs> ladies, and I'm gonna call y'all ladies, but regular women who are smart and articulate and can talk about things and fly over country. What a great concept. I mean, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's, it's so fun. With me is Kendi Chase. All right, so Kendi Chase is one of the ladies of another view, which is of course a, a program here on Beck. And uh, tell me a little bit about when it airs and we'll come back to it later, but. 
So it airs Monday through Friday at 4.30. On Beck. On Beck. Yes. And you talk about a variety of topics, kind of like Becker and I do, yeah. too, same sort of thing. But what I wanted to talk about a little bit is your journey to get to the point where you're on TV every day or, <laughs> or every other day or, or twice a week. Twice for a myself. week. Even, even being on TV twice a week is kind of a crazy thing. So tell me a little bit about your story. Well, it's crazy. I didn't <laughs> anticipate this happening at all, honestly. So my middle name is Joe. It is. And I would say I'm an average. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, with COVID and uh, just everything that took place, it put me in a place, a uh, position actually, of, I would say, leadership and being a voice for people who were maybe afraid to share their concerns about what was happening. How does that even happen? How do you go from just being a regular Joe to all of a sudden deciding, I mean, what was the spark that, that put you over the edge and said, that's it, I need to actually do something about this and be proactive about it? Yeah, that's a good question. So I had had a lot of people reach out to me. Uh, I've been very active on social media. And a lot of people would say, I'm going to just put this in God's hands and trust him. And I'm a believer in God. Right. Uh, but one day I was running, and I was thinking about this, and I, I just realized that I have to actually do something. And it was from that moment that it just, it changed the trajectory of my life. I mean, I was a keyboard <laughs> warrior on Facebook, basically, sharing my opinions, right. being super angry. But in that moment, I was like, nope, it's time to stop. And I've got to turn this anger into action. Now, nobody wants to be the angry keyboard no. warrior. And <laughs> I mean, I've seen that in myself sometimes, too. And, and I have to reset and stop and say, no, you know what, you need to just try to be kind and explain to people things. But it's, it's hard because there are things that you see on social media that do make you think. Oh, absolutely. And it's frustrating. So what did you do to be proactive in the beginning? So you were a keyboard warrior. You were writing things on there. What, what, did, what were the steps that you took next? Well, I didn't know how to take a step. But one of the ideas, you know, I'd been super active on Facebook. And I had met people who had similar views to myself mm -hmm. online. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to organize a group. And I contacted a couple friends, threw it out there to them as far as, what do you think of this idea? And they're like, there's already so many groups like this. And they're super hesitant. And I said, but this one, I want to be different. I don't want it to be just information. In fact, I don't really want it to be information. I want it to be organized in such a way that it's all focused on actions that we can take to stand up. And so I started it. Uh, it was very small growing at first, but within a week, I mean, I had hundreds of people that were joining, and it just has snowballed. It became something that I never anticipated. I'm not <laughs> kidding. I'm like, how did this happen? Well, talk about the page and what it is called. OK. So the page is called North Dakota Freedom Defenders. And um, it's, yeah, its main focus is all geared towards actions that we can take in North Dakota that help protect our freedoms. Think about that. That is such an all-encompass. For me, this is like a very big deal because Anybody who knows me knows that I'm extremely passionate about the fact that people should get engaged and people should, you know, start doing things and, and learn how to do actions. So for me, my goal is to try to educate people on how to get involved. And this is perfect, Kendi, because this is exactly your op opportunity to reach out to a large amount of people. Mm -hmm. And so um, we have a little clip from her page because I, I love this because she started out just as an administrator doing the doing the keyboard stuff. But things have kind of spiraled a little bit. So the, you're doing live videos now, too. Yeah. So let's take a look at that right now. Basically complaining about what was happening without really doing anything else. And so with that, kind of pushed me to the point of wanting to take action. I reached out to a few of my friends who were also keyboard warriors and people that I had started meeting because of um, just online activity, shared my idea, uh, got their thoughts on it, and out of that, the group was formed. I never foresaw it growing like this. I, I have been shocked by how many people are out there who actually are willing to take a stand. I love that so much, Sue. So Thank you're you. advocating things like going to 
um, city commission meetings mm -hmm. and learning about things and getting involved and, and doing things with your feet. Right, yes. And you know what's interesting is when I first organized the group, it actually, I had called it North Dakota Freedom Fighters. Mm -hmm. And it's, I let it sit for just a little bit, but I did not like that. Right. I didn't want it to be like we were aggressive. Right. Um, and so I decided to change, to soften it, because I wanted our approach to be soft, but determined to stand for our freedom. A hundred percent. Well, I love it. Um, you know, then you were, um, uh, you were, in addition to doing the, the website, you were starting to getting, getting people to go to meetings and mm -hmm. things like that. And you yourself started to go to meetings and, and do that too. It's, it's a wonderful progression. Your story is great. And how things have actually progressed for you beyond that probably kind of surprised you too. Oh, absolutely. You know, I had attended one school board meeting up until this point. And what I've realized through this experience is how important it is to be engaged as a citizen in the affairs of the government. And uh, I had never planned on being so active and vocal. But, you know, it's funny is I had attended attended several commissioner meetings mm -hmm. and within a few as I approach the podium you always have to state your name right they were stating mine oh. <laughs> before I <laughs> before I got there so you know I've made an impression with them and um, yeah it's been it's been amazing actually to see people stand up do and, you think you've these. grown as a role model now because all of a sudden you're from in the background not doing anything to all of a sudden kind of going into more of a leadership role oh yes for sure and that it has been uncomfortable for me. I, I love to be involved, but I don't like to have the focus on myself. I would much rather shine it on other people. Are you a rabble rouser? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But um, I, I have had to learn that I feel like God has called me into this. And I have had to just say, I'm going to do this. As uncomfortable as it is, I, I'm going to do it because well, I know it's right. It's kind of important to listen when God calls. Absolutely. And so that's the thing. Sometimes a lot of people just ignore that little word, and you, you just got to listen to it. Too. Yes. So um, can I hold you over, and can we talk to Absolutely. you a little bit more? Because we've got a little bit more to talk to her about, too. And uh, when we come back, we will talk a little bit about how she has gone and spoken in front of big groups of people, and now really big groups of people with television when we come back. stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's best contractors. 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. In southwestern and south central North Dakota on any given day at any given moment, a Dakota Community Bank and Trust customer is logging in or signing on to do their online or mobile banking. We believe that community banking can blend both the past with down-home customer service in-house and the future with modern banking conveniences and technology for our customers anywhere, like here or here, all while honoring our long-standing tradition of community-first oriented banking here at Dakota Community Bank and Trust. My wife was diagnosed with uh, early stage Alzheimer's. We talked about it and we kind of decided we'd be a little bit proactive and try to start making provisions. So we started looking here and uh, Eventide worked out to be pretty much the perfect answer. I guess I, I didn't expect it to be so nice. The staff here were terrific. We enjoy it. They say, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. At OK Tire, we're here to keep you going. From Firestone tires and replacements to retreads and even Firestone tracks, we have you covered. Our certified Firestone experts are ready to get you back up and running, no matter if you're on site or in the field, saving you time and money. OK Tire, we keep the tough going. 
Now is the best time to plan for your 2021 farm equipment needs. North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing is currently offering early order savings. Take advantage of big savings on North America's broadest tillage line, including the Super Colder Samurai and the innovative BRT Renegade, as well as the best-built, best-backed land rollers in the industry. Talk to your Summers dealer today or go to summersmfg.com to learn more about early order savings available on all Summers equipment. Welcome back to No Apologies with Becker on Beck. I'm Lori Hins in on the, the desk duty tonight, and it's chicks, nothing but chicks tonight, just saying. We, uh, we, he'll be back. Don't worry. We'll have Becker back on in just a little bit. But right now I'm talking to Candy Chase, and Candy Chase has um, a new gig right now here on Beck, and she's with the Ladies of Another View, which is such an exciting concept. I'm very, very thrilled to promote that because it's such a it's such a unique thing you guys are kind of the antithesis of the view the view and so mm -hmm. you're doing a completely different thing but I want to talk a little bit about your um, moving from not being active to being active online to then administrating a, a popular uh, Facebook page I, you have what over 5,000 people on the page already which is super cool and so getting people activated and doing things and then you got asked by Jared and me to uh, actually give a speech in front of what turned out to be hundreds and hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. So how was that for you? <laughs> well, honestly, when Jared called me, I, I mean, my jaw hit the floor. I was like, what? Um, but you know, I've had public speaking experience before, and so I was grateful that I had that. Right. Um, it was an amazing experience to be around so many people that loved America and uh, just to feel that energy. It was amazing. So the background is that we did a rally. Uh, it was a Stand with Trump rally, and it was on November 7th at the state capitol. And hundreds and hundreds of people came with their flags. And you're right, it was a very patriotic thing. Let's show a little clip of part of her speech there from that event. All right, so I'm not a preacher, and I definitely don't have the same energy that was here right before. But I hope if anyone comes near and wants to attack me, that you've got my back, and I trust that you do. I think it will be interesting to watch the news tonight to see how they portray our gathering. Are they going to show you, or are they going to show them? Okay, I can bet that it's not going to be the reality of what we're facing, okay? And so that needs to give us heart, because you're here and you're actually seeing what's happening. So go watch tonight and let's see how they portray this because the media, they are liars. Okay, so I'm gonna challenge the media. I love that so much. It was like totally calling them out. It was the best thing ever. And yeah, oh. you were spot on too. I watched the news, I watched the regular news and yeah. it was spin like big time spin. Of course. Yeah, that was that was fantastic. And you look at how you fired that crowd up. <laughs> You're a little person. I'm You're little. Little. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it was wonderful. And I love it. and then thank you. Uh, that video is courtesy of the North Dakota Young Republicans. So we got to see that video. They were videotaping the whole thing, so we got to see everybody's speeches later too. Yeah. That video, by the way, um, that little clip of the whole video, that video has been viewed over nineteen thousand times already mm. now too. So look at how many other people you've inspired. <laughs> I just, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. So after you did that Trump rally, um, you well, you were were you already talking to the people of Ladies of Another View at that point? Were you yes. already doing some practicing and doing things like that? Tell me about what the journey's been like to get get on this new talk show. Oh my gosh! So <laughs> I will not forget the day I received a phone call, completely out of the blue. Actually, it was a text I received from Patty. And she's like, you don't know me, but I want to talk to you about a TV show. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but when she called and spoke to me, I mean, I could just feel that feeling inside that, wow, what an opportunity. And I was so honored and excited. It's been an amazing experience. And uh, yeah, we've been on the air 
for a week. Mm -hmm. This is, we're in our second week. And these women are just, they're passionate and they care so much about the issues that we're facing today. And I, I just, I love them. And if I can say one thing about, as far as my journey, uh, this year, I, I didn't set traditional goals. I made a vision board. And what has been so interesting is one of the things that I put on there was a, an image of women that were circled together. I really have been longing for just connection with women and friendship. And I, this has been, it has presented in my life by being in this show. These women have become my friends. Isn't that amazing how yeah. that happens too? I, I will have to tell you that there is a certain age at which those girlfriends become very important. And I'm in that same <laughs> that same zone with you right now. And it yeah. is, it is. It's, it's, it's a blessing and it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Well, I love the fact that you are motivating people to get out there, get involved. It's, it's easy to just talk. It's easy to just behind the screen talk even more so and be excoriating people and be mean, but it's a, it's a whole different thing when you have to all of a sudden start getting people to move and do things for good. And I love the fact that you are inspiring people to do that, Candy. Thank you so yeah. much. You know, I, I don't know how it's happening, to be honest. I think that I must have some power with my words in how I write and how I call people to action. But there is something, and it's not just me. I can't take credit for this. I mean, the people are showing up. And it, it's telling me and everyone else that people care. Right. And I think that, that more often than not, people just needed someone who would just stand up and just kind of lead them. But they are doing it. Talk about some of the um, topics that you talk about with regard to freedom on your, on your page. And you have rules. You have pretty specific rules on that Facebook page, the North Dakota Freedom Defenders page. Yes. You know, so it's been difficult to manage uh, because there are so many people that are in the group now. And I can't, me and the moderators, we can't catch everything. And so some of the rules are not always followed. But I have tried to be very strict as far as what can get into the feed. Mm -hmm. You know, we see so much information on Facebook. And I didn't want this to just be another place where things were just coming through that was information. It has to be action oriented. Um, if if people are rude to each other, I mean, we just don't tolerate that. There has, we deal enough with that outside. And I wanted this space to be safe for people to, to feel that they mattered and that their voice mattered. And Do you think there are more people from um, other places that are also joining your group? Or are there mainly, is it mainly people from North Dakota? So we really have tried to just keep it North Dakotans. I mean, when, when requests come through, we see where they're from. Oh, and so do. if they... We'll let those that are close by, like South Dakota border or right. Minnesota, but um, mostly it's, it is North Dakota. And um, we have people from all over the state. I can see where they're from. It's, it is amazing. And just think about uh, what a large footprint you are having I'm from just a very small, so I'm just trying to inspire people. <laughs> Just get involved, and all it yes. takes is one little action thing that you can do. And I'm trying to do the same thing with particularly um, party politics mm -hmm. with my job as National Committee Woman. And my goal is to grow the people who are involved and teach them how to get in on the grassroots level and make big impacts from just starting small. Yes, yes. I, I mean, I did not know that this would happen as far as... <laughs> But it's, it is the grassroots movement that matters. And what I've seen is, well, everything that we've tried to stand up against, we haven't been successful with everything. But I know that we have held the line at times. And I know that we have made a difference. And we're not going away. We, I, I'm going to continue to fight. And I know that the people who are in this movement, they're going to continue too. I received a phone call this week from one of our government leaders. And they told me to be quiet. <gasps> They really? Told, yes. They told me to be quiet. And I, I said, no, I am not going to be quiet. I am a citizen of the United States of America, a citizen of North Dakota. I have a right to raise my voice of concern. And so I, I've just realized that we cannot take our freedoms for granted. Yeah. And that we must do what is necessary to protect and defend those freedoms. And it's the average citizen that's going to make a difference. 
it's, it's really up to us if we care about what's happening. I think this election in particular mobilized a lot of people who maybe hadn't been involved, maybe hadn't been engaged before, and I think the engagement has really changed this, this cycle particularly. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think we've realized with just everything that's happened this year, and the election is just that exclamation point on this, that yes, you, you need to be involved and aware of what's going on. And COVID didn't hurt either because no. a lot of people were very strong opinions about one way or the other, and they're being much more vocal about it now too. Yes. Yes, for well, sure. Well, thank you for all you Aww. have done, and you, you did a marvelous job at the rally. I was so grateful that you came and talked, and good luck, with the best to you and thank all the you. ladies of Another View. There they are, all my favorite people. Actually, <laughs> I know all of them personally, so I'm very, very <laughs> proud of that, and I am very much looking forward to all sorts of conversations that you can have and debunk the regular mainstream type yes. of ladies. So uh, next, when we come back, I am going to once again engage Dr. Becker, and we're going to do another fabulous brain food here on No Apologies with Becker. Howdy, folks. It's the Caneline Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. caramel made soups. Fill your grill, add a salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Caneline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a calm roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Since opening in Hebron in 1940, Dakota Community Bank and Trust has been your hometown bank. Our mission has been to provide modern banking convenience with old-fashioned hometown service. We've grown with the communities we serve. Through year-round events, countless sponsorships, and nearly 7,000 hours of volunteering each year. Learn more about our 80-year history at dakotacommunitybank.com. Jeez, what a mess. Look at that. There's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's best contractors. 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. For the greatest selection and full menu offering, it's the Four Season Restaurant and Ice Cream Parlor in Garrison. Succulent sandwiches, big breakfast served all day, and delicious desserts. Easy access in and out for campers and RVs. The Four Season Restaurant at the top of Main Street, Garrison. Are you a thrill seeker, sightseer, or day tripper? The Ford Bronco Sport SUV is built for you. Four Bears Casino is giving away a 2021 Ford Bronco Sport loaded with a ton of interior space, safari style roof, smooth suspension for any terrain, and easy to clean surfaces. Qualify now just by playing your favorite slots at Four Bears Casino. Double points on Sundays. Also get in on Super Senior Wednesdays, slot turning Thursdays, and hot seats on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Spin into Four Bears Casino and Lodge for chances to win. things in life are hard. That's why banking shouldn't be. Cornerstone Bank. Well, thank you for coming back and joining us here on No Apologies tonight with Becker and Lori Hins here. And Becker is off on assignment, we will say today, but he is zooming in. There he is right now. And uh, I want to preface this <laughs> next segment of brain food by saying 
this is half your idea and half my ideas. And you can tell whose is whose pretty quick coming up here because I've seen what you've got planned here, Becker. The good half is mine. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so on Brain Food tonight, our theme essentially, and I didn't really plan to have themes on Brain Food necessarily, it just kind of happened, but our theme is, we're talking a little bit about Christmas, and Christmas is of course very near, and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about what kind of Christmas celebrations or unusual things are held in different states, and I first went of course to North Dakota and looked at it, and I'll come back to North Dakota in a little bit because I was a little disappointed just simply because it kind of got canceled this year. But um, the brain food uh, for Christmas is a Christmas in Virginia for me. And in Virginia, they have a Christmas camel, Rick. They have a Christmas, they legitimately have a Christmas camel. Now, if you would have told me, oh, that's a tradition, that makes perfect sense, I probably would have said no. But in 1787, George Washington, brought a camel to his home in Mount Vernon for Christmas. And so now Mount Vernon pays tribute to the tradition every year by having their very own Christmas camel. He's there every year. He'll take selfies with you. He's very popular. I'm not certain what his name is, but they have a Christmas camel in Virginia because of George Washington starting that tradition. Now, I guess that was kind of, that was a cute camel. I mean, it's really cute, but I, that's their tradition in Virginia. We in North Dakota do not have a Christmas camel. I see. Well, a, a little sidebar on brain food is that that type of camel is a dromedary camel, it has a uh, one hump, like as opposed to the Bactrian, which has two humps and is probably much easier to ride, I would assume. <laughs> I think I learned that in some children's book one time too. A one hump Hamill has a one hump poop. Sorry, it's a every everyone poops. It's an everyone poops book. All the mommies are watching, like, yeah, I know, I learned that too. Okay, go ahead. I uh, I'm gonna try to recover from that. So you're welcome. Uh, yeah. So I was thinking about Christmas traditions, and I'm big on traditions. And Elf on the Shelf is, of course, uh, one of the most popular ones over these last few years. But it's very intensive, I think, for parents. And uh, so I don't want to give anything away, but we all know what I'm talking about. But I thought, you know, maybe there is a tradition which would not be something that's so intensive and last night after night after night for, for the whole month of December. And something occurred to me back when I was real young. I was, I, th I think it might have been my grandma Rosie told me about the situation. And uh, it's a tradition which is more in Middle Eastern Europe and extends over into Austria and the southern part of Germany, Bavaria. So uh, in addition to Santa Claus or St. Nicholas, there is also Krampus. And oh, I've heard of Gar. Oh, good Lord. Yes, Krampus is half goat and oh. half demon. And so if you are a good child, of course, you get something, maybe candy or presents from St. Nick. But if you're a bad child, uh, you get a visit from Krampus, and he possibly is going to throw you in his basket and take you away. He has chains in which to chain you. And I don't know what the deal is with the, the excessively long tongue, but it's, <laughs> it's pretty freaky. It, that is uh, terrible. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely frightening. So he'll grab children by the ears. So these are all things that I think are, are really probably a wonderful family tradition to start. Um, it will certainly help the children behave better in those last few weeks of December. Um, now, instead of Krampus, my parents, when we were growing up, and I don't know about, this just occurred to me this very second. <laughs> so my parents put out a little baby Jesus for my sister Wendy and myself. And every time we did a, something good, they put a little piece of straw in the manger. Um, the manger was empty, of course, until December 25th, right? And so every time we did something good, a little piece of straw goes in. Every time we did something naughty, a piece of straw would come out. And the question would be, would baby Jesus be warm when he was born on December 25th? I kid you not. This is, this is something my parents did, which was good behavior modification. But, you know, <laughs> I, I'd, go, I'd go the Krampus route if I had that to was... raise kids again. There's no doubt. Krampus all the way, good, well-behaved kids for the entire month. I guarantee it. That was terrifying. Those pictures were horrible. I, I can't even. I, I can't even imagine why you were looking at those. Why were you looking at those pictures? Those are hideous. That's terrible. I know. 
I know, I love it. <gasps> I mean, Santa Claus is frightening enough for children who go to the <laughs> to sit on a lap, let alone that type of garbage. Yeah. That was nasty. I, I just, I, I can't even believe I'm going to have to try to segue to my next one after that because that, I, I saw your picture. And I'm like, what is he talking about? <laughs> Krampus it is. All right. So um, my next Christmas tradition is nothing like Krampus. Uh, my family and I, some years ago, took a trip and we were in Michigan. We went to the Upper Peninsula and we also went to Frankenmuth. Now, I don't know, we have talked about German things before you and I, but mm -hmm. Frankenmuth is a Bavarian community. It is the most beautiful little city. If you ever get to Michigan and get to go to Frankenmuth, you will see Bronner's Christmas Wonderland in Frankenmuth. Now, in addition to the city having all sorts of um, floral baskets hanging from things in the summertime and all sorts of Bavarian style uh, buildings, they have amazing Bavarian suppers and meals there. You will find this massive, massive 320,000 square foot store that is open all year round and it claims to be the largest Christmas store in the world. It is called Bronner's Christmas Wonderland and we have been there and you can't even imagine <laughs> how many Christmas items. If you are looking for something specific for Christmas, I am thinking that that might be your absolute best bet rows and aisles and aisles, 320,000 square feet of just decorations and gifts and trees, literally any holiday trinket you could possibly think of, you could find at Bronner's Christmas Wonderland. So we visited uh, that store and it was, it was amazing. <laughs> it was just, it, and I'm not a big lover of all things decorative like that, but it was super cool. So. Yeah. All right, my next piece for brain food is another very interesting tradition. Uh, this dates back to the mid-1800s at least. And uh, I have to look because I have to figure out how to pronounce it. It is Yolakoturin. Yolakoturin. And uh, that's the Yule Cat. So Yule Cat okay. sounds... Oh, my Lord. Oh, great. dude with the dark stuff. Seriously. Well, Here, no, kitty, these, kitty. Oh, my are, Lord. This is brain food, Laurie. We have to, we have to expand our horizons here. So the Yule Cat is a, a entity that if you don't have new clothes for Christmas, the Yule Cat will eat you. And uh, what a charming, charming Christmas tradition that is. And uh, it's, it was designed or intended to encourage farmers or ranchers, if you will, to shear their sheep early enough that clothes could be made, a sweater could be made in time for Christmas. So uh, don't forget, wear your new Christmas sweater so that you are not eaten by the Yul Katurin. Um, another great Christmas tradition. I'm happy to bring those to you. Wow, no more brain food for you. That's it, you were cut off, no more brain food for you. That was just ridiculous. Uh, before we leave this segment, I just wanna say that uh, in North Dakota, our tradition, I alluded to it earlier, is in Garrison, and you may know about this, it is the Victoria era uh, Dickens Festival that is held every year. Well, this year, of course, the 2020 festival canceled because of COVID, but 2021's dates are already lined up. They are November 26th and 22nd, uh, 27th, the weekend of the 3rd and 4th of December, and 10th and 11th in 2021. So have no fear, the Dickens Festival will be back. And when we come back, we are not gonna show that Christmas cat anymore. That was nasty. Uh, we are going to talk about a defense bill which um, has passed the house. And we'll, we'll follow up with that in just a moment. Howdy folks, it's the Caroline Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill at our salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Caroline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a con roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Hi, I'm Dennis Haugen, along with my sons Andy and Mike, and we're showing our support for wind energy in North Dakota. Wind energy has provided farmers like us with a steady stream of income that's not tied to the weather, like crops and cattle are. 
Another bonus is that wind farm owners are required to maintain the roads leading up to the turbines. Because of that, oftentimes these roads are the best in the county. Wind energy is good for landowners, it's good for the land, it's good for our economy, and it's good for North Dakota. Capital City Restaurant Supply is your one-stop shop for quality restaurant products for the large to small kitchens. Commercial grade restaurant and bar supplies, limb game processing equipment, refrigeration, dinnerware, and smallware. We sell everything including the kitchen sink for trusted manufacturers for the chef and all of us. Open to the public since 1971, we are veteran owned and North Dakota proud. Let us take care of your restaurant and home kitchen needs today by visiting us at 1414 Interstate Loop in Bismarck or on the web at CapitalCityRestaurantSupply.com. My wife was diagnosed with uh, early stage Alzheimer's. We talked about it and we kind of decided we'd be a little bit proactive and try to start making provisions. So we started looking here and uh, even title worked out to be pretty much the perfect answer. I guess I, I didn't expect it to be so nice. The staff here were terrific. We enjoy it. They say when the going gets tough, the tough get going. At OK Tire, we're here to keep you going. From Firestone tires and replacements to retreads and even Firestone tracks, we have you covered. Our certified Firestone experts are ready to get you back up and running, no matter if you're on site or in the field, saving you time and money. OK Tire, we keep the tough going. Now is the best time to plan for your 2021 farm equipment needs. North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing is currently offering early order savings. Take advantage of big savings on North America's broadest tillage line, including the Super Colder Samurai and the innovative BRT Renegade, as well as the best-built, best-backed land rollers in the industry. Talk to your Summers dealer today or go to summersmfg.com to learn more about early order savings available on all Summers equipment. Welcome back to No Apologies with Becker on Beck. And there is Becker on the screen, uh, far, far away, but still close in our hearts. And uh, I've got your desk. And uh, we're going to finish up the show tonight with a topic uh, that is an interesting one, the defense bill that has recently passed the House and what is going to happen next with it. Of course, it's going to go to the Senate. But Trump, uh, our president, not a real big fan, Rick. Yeah. So he, um, so the, so it was passed in the House, significant uh, majority, veto-proof majority, uh, 335 to 78. A lot of Republicans were on board. Uh, interestingly, the Freedom Caucus was not on board. But he, Trump is not a fan uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, biggest one of which is probably something he threw in as a separate thing. But that deserves its own discussion, probably. But in that bill, unrelated to defense authorization, was a, a, a removal of the protection, the immunity, uh, for liability for social media providers. And uh, so that would have taken that away. We can talk about that in a second, but that's one. Uh, there was a second one where he, uh, they, they're planning to rename two of the bases, Fort Benning and Fort Hood, because they're named after Confederate soldiers. And so there's this whole, you know, revisionist history type of thing. He didn't want that done. So that was uh, taken out as well. And then probably, I didn't read this, but my guess is he would be opposed to, there's a component in there about slowing down or limiting the withdrawal of troops from Afghanistan, which he has, as far as I know, been a proponent of. So those are the three things with the number one thing, again, being that 230. Um, Protection. So sec Section 230 is a very great interest to me because it is, to me, a get out of jail free card that the social media giants are abusing and big tech has completely used that to their advantage to do whatever they please with regard to censoring. Censoring is a big deal right now. People are more than ever actually realizing it because we're seeing it in real time. And now um, maybe you heard about the YouTube one now. YouTube is... Uh, says, you know what, since the 8th has passed, we are now going to officially just remove things. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, all, pre it's all pretty significant. Uh, 
the 230 protection is if, if, if you are going to edit content and like they're doing a fact, fact checking, then you become right. a publisher. Exactly. And, uh, and then you don't have those protections from being potentially sued. They're allegedly just a platform where anything goes out. Clearly, that's not the case, so that it needs to be addressed. Interestingly, Tulsi Gabbard, the uh, very next day after it was passed in the House, I believe, put forth a bill to get rid of those 230, Section 230 uh, protections. So that may be a part of it anyway. So this will move on to the Senate. We'll see if the Senate approves it with a veto-proof majority. Um, you know, arguably, Tulsi Gabbard is, is correct. This is a good thing. Maybe it shouldn't have been in the Defense Authorization Act. The problem is Trump has to play these games if he wants to get anything passed through the House of Representatives, which will not do anything, even if they agree with it or it's good for the nation. If it's going to be something on Trump's watch, they're going to hold off until, until Biden gets in. So say he... It, it, it goes through the Senate, comes to the president's desk. Does he veto it? Will it be very unpopular? Does he have to? I mean, he doesn't strike me. Our president doesn't strike me as a person who is looking at the political fallout of much of anything that he does. He doesn't work that way. He works on principle no. and whether or not it's the right thing to do, in my estimation. So I'm wondering if he wouldn't just veto it. Yeah, that's a good question. It's, there's going to be a political calculation to it because there are, there's downside, of course. you have before, before the Pentagon can do anything, they need some kind of authorization. And this authorization includes a 3% raise for all the soldiers. So there, there is some significant political fallout. Part of what he's doing in his whole you know, chess game is coalescing the Republicans around him or doing what he can um, so that if he's out, uh, in the next uh, next week, I guess, that there is a potential future that he's involved in, either as the main guy or behind the scenes. And I think this is part of trying to get the Republicans to to uh, ban uh, band together and um, still have some effect before the new president takes over. Well, it'll be interesting. It's another one of those uh, topics that you and I will be probably watching closely. May have to do a follow-up show on this one later on to see where we're at and make sure that everybody's updated on that. Uh, thank you for zooming in. I really appreciate it. I mean, it would have been really hard to do this all by myself. And, and you've done a stellar dad. job. Stellar job. <laughs> You're very kind. But I do like this desk, and I do like your parking spot, so I'm probably going to have to race you for the parking spot now. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> join us for our next program, and Rick will be back in the studio, and we will be touching on electors and what is going on with the election. We'll see you again soon on No Apologies with Becker here on Beck. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's the worst looking that. cat I have ever seen in my life. <laughs>